I'm here with Jeff Holt. It's fantastic to have you here this morning. How have you enjoyed the racing? It's fantastic. It's been a great week, um, great weather. Unfortunately, we could have done with a bit more wind, but uh, no, it's been going really well. Um, has anything surprised you? Has anything surprised me? Um, I guess one of the biggest surprises is how much the, the rest of the world has improved <laughs> since the last uh, Olympics. Um, we've got a great team, we know that, we've always known that, but to watch the other teams, particularly uh, some of the lesser known countries, the, the Scandinavian countries, um, they're doing exceptionally well. And the level of competition out there, you know, this really is first class. You're a competitive sailor yourself. Have you ever been interested in Paralympic sailing? That's a good question. I, um, the short answer is no, um, because I've, I've done a lot of sailing, you're right, I've, I've done a lot of long distance sailing as well. Um, but. I've witnessed the intensity and commitment that these guys put themselves through. Um, you know, to do an Olympic campaign or a Paralympic campaign, it's not just the last few months you think about it. You think about it years in advance. You put your life on hold. You put your family, your friends, your work, and everything on hold for this, for this one moment in time. You know, these 11 races out in the bay. And that's a huge commitment. And, uh, and I'm a little bit selfish. I'm a, I'm a father and I'm a, I'm a husband. And, uh, you know, I've got my wife and my son, and I've just got my other things to think about. So the short answer is no, I'll leave it, leave it to a younger generation. You're a big ambassador for da disabled sailing. How do you think our Team G Paralympic sailors will inspire the next generation? There's no question they will do that. There's absolutely no question, because back in, I'm showing my age now, but back in 96, uh, a dear friend of mine, Andy Castles, um, in Atlanta, he won the gold medal in the test event for sailing. And... From that moment forward, you could, you could see, if you, you drew a graph, you could see this escalation of interest in disabled sailing. And um, I was chairman of Sailability at the time, the national sailing charity. And we went from uh, genuinely uh, a handful of disabled sailors in the mid 90s to thousands uh, of sailors within a few years. And we've now, you know, as uh, you heard from Debbie earlier in the week, there's now over 30,000 disabled people sailing every year in the UK. It's now inextricably linked to, uh, uh, to our success and the, and the high profile that we get um, through the media, through success of events like the Paralympics. And how do people, if they want to get involved in the Paralympic sailing and sailing themselves, what do they need to do? Well, it, it, it's worth remembering that Paralympic sailing really is the elite end. It's the tip of the, of the iceberg, really. Um, and the best way to get involved in, in any sailing is to start through the sailability programs and the RYA um, at their website um, can direct you to your local sailability group and then identify if you have a talent, uh, if, you, if you want to take that further, if you want to develop it into racing. There's a number of classes that people can sail and the idea is to find the right class for you, the right class of boat uh, and then through the development program that we have um, move onwards and upwards and who knows if you try hard enough you work hard enough um, and really dedicate yourself you could be representing your country I should say I'm a, I'm a member of the Paralympic steering group and uh, it's one of my our jobs to identify that talent um, and we it's a tough job because you know we, we are forever trying to encourage more people to take part in elite sailing um, but also we, we then have to try and cherry pick the best um, to represent our country so I'd like people to make our job harder <laughs> and, uh, and provide us with more with more options. So Jeff have you ever sailed any of the Paralympic classes? I have indeed uh, as you're aware there's three classes there's the 2.4 meter single-handed keel boat and I've sailed that I struggle in that a bit um, that's the boat where you have to get right inside it and uh, you can only see your head popping out I struggle because I can't use my hands very well so um, I can't pull the lines uh, very easily. And because it leans over quite a lot, um, my balance isn't very good. So I've sailed that boat. I've also sailed the sonar, <clears throat> and that's the three-man keel boat um, that John Robertson's skippering. Um, once again, I struggle a bit because my balance isn't very good. Um, but I, what did I do in that boat? Oh, I, I helmed that boat, and yeah. uh, that was in America, and that worked quite well. Um, that's a much what they call it, a much stiffer boat, so it doesn't lean over so much. Um, you'll very much have to be part of a team, though, in that boat. 
Um, there's three of you in it. And then there's the, the third boat, of course, which is the Scud two-person kill boat. And I've not, I've not tried that one yet. That one looks the most exciting. Um, and I'm itching to have a go after the games, actually. Earlier in the week, we interviewed some of the Paralympic transitional squad sailors. Can you tell us a little bit about them? Yeah, we've got a good transitional team. Um, the, these are the guys and girls that sit just underneath our, um, uh, our, our Paralympic elite sailors. And they're the ones that we're working hard on to representing us in, in 2016. Um, I, can name, I can name a few, but I'll name Alex Hofton, for example. Alex, I've known Alex uh, for the last four years. You asked a question earlier about... Um, about being inspired. Well, interestingly, Alex had been inspired by, um, by watching other disabled people sail and decided he wanted to give it a go. And now this young lad, he was 14 at the time when I first met him. He's now 18. He's now at university. Um, and he's a hot talent. You know, he, he's got something, a natural ability. Um, and we really have high hopes for Alex over the next, well, we've got four years to work on that talent. We're always looking for, for people who, you know, might like to be interested in sailing. And the thing with disability, a number of people have inherent disabilities where they're born with them and, and they have them throughout their lives. And other people, like myself, find ourselves disabled later in life. And it's the same with servicemen. You know, these guys are highly motivated, really uh, you know, fit, um, uh, strong guys and, and girls. And they, they are the ones who may, may find themselves um, suitable candidates. We've got two or three on the programme already and they're proving to be excellent, uh, excellent potential for 2016. So as a, as a selector, I'm optimistic, um, but we've got a lot of work to do. Why is sailing such a good sport for disabled athletes? Sailing is a good sport, and it, this is a cliche that you will hear used time and time again in your life, and that's <laughs> this level playing field cliche that people use. Um, but hand on heart, I, you see, I was a professional yachtsman before my accident. I'd sailed halfway around the world. I'd done the Atlantic several times. And, um, and I had an accident that put me in a wheelchair. So I was able to, I've been able to experience sailing from both sides as a disabled person and an able-bodied person. And the beauty of sailing is that if you find the right boat to suit your disability, so that it's not, you don't want to be going out and not enjoying it, you've got to be having fun. So if you can find a boat that's comfortable, it's fun, uh, and you, you enjoy being on the water, then you can be as good as the next person. And um, you know, it, it may be a slight exaggeration. We've got Ben, who's just won gold. Um, you know, Ben and I could both sail at uh, a 2.4 against each other. He'd beat me, but that's not the point. Uh, we could both sail at a boat against each other. Now, that is a, that's a genuinely level playing field. And um, I know people that sail using only their tongue. Um, now, what other sport can you do competitively on a level playing field where someone can have all of their limbs and their faculties and they can race against somebody who can only use their tongue. Um, and I truly believe that there is no other sport other than sailing that can provide that.